Welcome back. In this video, we're going to revisit function notation, and we're going to work with polynomial, composite functions, and the graphs of those functions. So you may recall when we did function notation, we worked with this f of x or g of x, which really was our y or our output, while x was our input. So we would take a value for x, like here we have find f of negative 1, so negative 1 is our input, it's our x, and we would put negative 1 into the function named f. The function named f in this case is 2x squared plus 5x minus 7, while the function named g is just x minus 5. We're going to take some input and subtract 5 from it. That's all this mathematical machine or this function will do. So we're going to work with polynomial functions a similar way as we did with linear functions uh, earlier this year. So you'll be asked to do things like find f of negative 1. So that means put negative 1 into the function into the function named f wherever there is an x. So f of negative 1 simply equals 2 times negative 1 squared. And notice I put my input in parentheses. 5 times negative 1 minus 7. Negative 1 squared is 1. So 2 times 1 minus 5, minus 7, so that's a negative 12, plus 2, and f of negative 1 equals negative 10. So that means for the f function, when I input negative 1, when my x is negative 1, my y is negative 10. Simply inputs and then outputs, or x's and y's. There's my x, and there's my f of x. And we can do the same thing with g of 2. That just says put 2 into the g function, which is simply 2 minus 5, which is negative 3. So for the function named g, that's the ordered pair to negative 3. We can add and subtract functions. So we might be familiar with something like this, f of x plus g of x. Well, that would mean put some value of x into both the f and g functions and then add the results. And you will see that also as f plus g of x. And we can do the same thing with subtraction. f minus g of x is simply find f of x, put x into your function, in the f function, calculate what that value is, put the same x into the g function, calculate that value, and then subtract your results. So here's an example of f plus g of negative 1. Well, we've already calculated f of negative 1. That's negative 10. So using that value, uh, I'm going to take negative 10 minus, and then whatever g of negative 1 is. So g of negative 1 would be negative 1 minus 5. Wasn't that my g function? My g function, g of x, was x minus 5. So negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6. So I'm going to take negative 10 minus a negative 6, which is negative 10 plus 6 equals negative 4. So f plus g of negative 1 is negative 4. Now it is okay to add and subtract like terms of the functions and then input into the new function. So let's say we wanted to find f minus g of 2. Well, our functions, going back to the top, 2x squared plus 5x minus 7. So my functions are 2x squared 
plus 5x minus 7, that's my f of x function, and my g of x function is x minus 5. So what I can do is I can subtract those first. So I'm going to subtract the g of x function, the x minus 5, my result is 2x squared, and I have to change all my signs and add. So I get 2x squared plus 4x minus 2. And now I can input 2 into the function. So f minus g of 2 becomes 2 times 2 squared, because I've already subtracted the, the functions, plus 4 times 2, minus 2. And I'm going to square the 2 first. 2 squared is 4. So I will get 4, well, 2 times 4, plus 8, minus 2. So I get 8 plus 8, minus 2, which is 14. So my final result of f minus g of 2 is 14. We have also done composite functions. This is something we did earlier this year in class, but occurs when we group one function inside of another. So again, our two functions, f of x equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 7, and our g function, x minus 5. You'll see in your text, f of g of x. <clears throat> and that is also written this way. We've seen it here where we've got g of x first, we find out what that value is, and then we have to input that into f. So these two are equivalent expressions, so f of g of x or f of g of x. So we calculate the value by inputting x into the g function, because we're going to start with the innermost function in the innermost command, and then that will become our input for f. So let's find f of g of negative 2. So we're going to start with g of negative 2, which is negative 2 minus 5. We know that's negative 7. So now we know g of negative 2 is negative 7, so our command here is to find f of negative 7. G of negative 2 is negative 7, so now find f of negative 7. So f of negative 7 becomes 2 times negative 7 squared plus 5 times negative 7. Notice I put that in parentheses. Minus 7. Negative 7 squared is 49. So 2 times a positive 49, minus 35, minus 7. So that's 98, minus 42. So I'm going to subtract here real quick. 8 minus 2 is 6, 9 minus 4 is 5. So sure enough, this Full result, f of g of negative 2 gives us an answer of 56. And you will also be asked to graph functions. I'm not going to review graphing of linear functions. A linear function is going to be the graph of a line. You are very familiar with f of x equals mx plus b or y equals mx plus b where we graph, we start with our y-intercept, and then we do rise over run, we use our slope to graph the rest of the line. We're also going to be graphing quadratic functions. So here's a new quadratic function, f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. And how we're going to graph this is we're going to use a table of values. We're going to have some input x, and we're going to input that into our function and get some output f of x, or if you will, y. So 
So our function x squared minus 2x minus 3. So the easiest one, as we've seen before, is to put 0 in for x and solve for y. Of course, that's our y-intercept. So I'm going to put 0 in for x, which is just 0 squared. I'll go ahead and put that in parentheses. Minus 2 times 0, minus 3. And hopefully we can eyeball that and realize that the x squared is going to become 0. The negative 2x is going to become 0. So when I input 0, I'm going to output negative 3. So my output is my constant. And sure enough, that's the ordered pair 0, negative 3, my x and my y. So I will go ahead and graph that particular point. And then we might want to work from here and see what this is going to look like. I'm going to skip 1. I'm going to go right to 2. And let's take a look at 2 squared minus 2 times 2 minus 3. So that's 4 minus 4 minus 3. And sure enough, when I input 2, I output negative 3. So I'll go to 2, negative 3. And I, got, I have that particular point. Now I am going to try 1, because there's something's going on here. I want to see what, what's happening in the middle, since I have the same output there. So let's go ahead and put 1 in. So I get 1 squared minus 2 times 1, minus 3. And 1 squared, that's 1, minus 2, minus 3. So I get an output of negative 4. And that's the ordered pair, 1, negative 4. That's going to be that particular point. So I've got this shape here. Okay, I might want to try an input of negative 1 and an input of 3. Let's see what we get when we input negative 1. That would be negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 minus 3. So notice my parentheses again. That will make sure I don't lose track of my signs. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is plus 2 minus 3. So when I input negative 1, I output 0. And that is my x-intercept. So that's where my graph crosses the x-axis. I have an output of 0. So negative 1 does that. And let's go ahead and check. Uh, 3. We'll do 3 for an input here, and let's see what we get. You probably can see the pattern already. So we get 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 3. So we get 9 minus 6 minus 3, and that equals 0. So when I input 3, I output 0, another ordered pair. That's this particular point right there. And let's take a look at our graph. I think I have enough points. And my graph looks something like that. So my graph is a parabola. It has a y-intercept of negative 3. It has an x-intercept of negative 1 and also another x-intercept of 3. And it looks like it bottoms out somewhere down here around negative 4. So there's an example of graphing a quadratic function where you use a table of values. And that's something we will take a look at again when I see you in class.